Hello, this is Lucy Zoller, Defender of Equestria, and this is my character analysis of the new main five after My Little Pony, A New Generation. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen the, the movie yet, you probably shouldn't watch this video. I know at this point, probably every pony's probably seen it by now, but I'm still going to be careful about the spoiler warning. So this video is going to be primarily about an aftermath analysis of the characters after the movie, because, you know, <laughs> we didn't really get to learn too much about them from, like, the trailers and stuff, and this is obviously their first appearance. But after watching the movie a couple more times, I love these characters, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more from them so roar. I'm gonna start off alphabetically and then uh, finish off with Sunny because I could almost do a whole video just on Sunny so I want to talk about each character what I think their character is and maybe what's gonna happen to them next and possibly what I think their element of harmony might be if they had one but that could be kind of tricky so we shall see so now we're starting off with Hitch I actually really like Hitch he's pretty cool I mean he's a little bit cliche it's <gasps> a young vulnerable pony <gasps> I must save him <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Blue Star and Hitch would definitely get along very well. It's like, don't worry, we will save you. But at the same time, I'm also glad that all the characters are more than capable of taking care of themselves and don't really need saving. In fact, they even brought this up directly. It's like, yeah, we don't need saving. Good for you. I do have to say in that situation though, actually, yeah, they didn't actually need his help in that particular situation. In fact, he actually made things worse for them. He's like, freeze. Oh no, we're busted. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Hitch being a sheriff obviously wants to, you know, help every pony and, you know, definitely play by the rules and the law. But that's what makes his relationship with Sonny really difficult. He all but says it is like, I can't be friends with a pony that's basically breaking the law all the time. <laughs> and he's got a good point there. If things didn't work out the way they had, at some point he probably was going to have to arrest Sonny and put her in jail, so... Oh dear. Strangely, I think out of all of the main five, he turns out to be the most, I would say, practical. I guess because he's a sheriff, he's following the law, so yeah, he has to, in a way, sometimes be a lot more practical. Yeah, during the song, uh, you'll fit right in, it's like, if we fail, we'll go to prison. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> He's unfortunately being, you know, the one who's thinking about this the realistic way and the practical way. So, yeah, if this doesn't work out, this isn't going to end well for them. He's definitely a really cool heroic pony, but I think Izzy might have actually hit on something. The badge is creating a unhealthy power dynamic, mm, which I think to his dismay is like, you know what, maybe she's right. Mm. At the same time, it's like, but I like my badge. Being the sheriff is obviously a very big part of his character and his job and everything. So yeah, it's a very big, important part to him. So to not have that would really put a, a strain on him. It would be an interesting question. What would Hitch do if he wasn't sheriff? So yeah, I think Hitch is character in a lot of ways is kind of not totally defined but what we did get to see i like that he's definitely very courageous but he also does have a little bit of a sensitive side you know like during the campfire you know he asks izzy you know why did you come to maritime bay and then after hearing the story i want to do my part he's a sheriff he does what to serve and all the things like yeah so he simply wants to do his part and again i think blue star and hitch would definitely get along very well so now, something that's interesting about Hitch, but really isn't part of his character, he's got like the critter magnet, I'm gonna call it. Dr. Wolf did a video on this. Is Hitch the next Fluttershy? <laughs> I don't think so. Sort of. I think Hitch might be the uh, next unwilling Fluttershy in some ways. That Fluttershy loved animals, and in return, they loved her for it. For some reason, all the animals love Hitch, and are just like, I love you, can I go home with you? <laughs> I think this could be that I've heard that some people say that animals are much better a judge of character than people are. So maybe the animals are like seeing, oh my gosh, you're this great heroic pony, and you're just amazing, I love you. <laughs> Unfortunately, Hitch doesn't really feel the same way. I mean, it's not that he doesn't care about critters. He just doesn't love them the way that Fluttershy does. So it's going to be interesting to see where they go with that. Is this just going to be like a running gag that every critter that Hitch encounters, that I love you, and just, you know, basically follow him around and do whatever he wants. It kind of worked out well in this story, because not only did he get his badge back, but this is also how uh, Pip and Zip's mom actually found their way to, uh, you know, Pip and Zip. And the rest of the paid five, so 
I have a feeling this will probably be useful in the future, but uh, I don't really know if Hitch is actually going to develop a love for these critters or not. I think in time maybe he will, but uh, we shall see. I think that within the group, he definitely serves as a little bit of like, don't worry, I will save you. Because like when the tank is like, I gotta rein that thing in. Sunny, Izzy, and Pip are all running into the lighthouse to go basically, you know, insert the crystals. Hitch is running in to go and like, you know, fight that thing. So yeah, I think that that's going to be part of his role. But I think that this thing with the animals will probably get a lot bigger and maybe he might actually develop a love for animals. But uh, we shall see. So next on to Izzy. So Izzy is definitely a interesting and a very exciting character this is since i'm gonna fall to the temptation which i really shouldn't have is this the new twilight or the new rainbow dash or the new pinkie pie then but partially gonna say that i think this is kind of like pinkie pie mixed with moki from fraggle rock i definitely feel a lot of uh pinkie pie in izzy she's excited she's hyper she's you know at one point actually you know bouncing around and skipping like the way that pinkie pie does which i do have to say if you were a pony it's pretty much the way you probably would would skip if you were going to skip that way and considering that she's like trying to like avoid these traps it kind of does make sense to, to do that too she's definitely excited and like oh the sea i've never seen the sea before and you know unfortunately a little bit oblivious to what's going on but this is definitely not Pinkie pie because she has a bit of this character called moki from a show called fraggle rock and moki was this very dreamy very flower child kind of character where it's like having welcome to the day ceremonies and collecting flowers. Moki was very calm and dreamy and so and this would have been more like if Moki had had like 10 cups of espresso and now she's really hyper and excited and like ooh friends yes. <laughs> I like that. I think the short answer with all these characters is like while they might have some similarities to you know the main six these are definitely new characters. So Roar. Yeah, I really like Izzy because, yeah, she's so excited, she's happy, and I really like her attitude. She has a sort of, like, this spiritual, you know, kind of attitude. It's like, her sparkle is so bright right now. Roar. I like that. I think that's good. It definitely di differentiates her from Pinkie Pie, and I think that's good. But at the same time, I'm also kind of glad that she does have these Pinkie Pie elements. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with her, because with the whole losing the magic thing, I think in some ways the big question I have for her is, has Izzy ever had magic? I honestly am not certain, and that's definitely a topic for another video, but it was interesting, like, at the end, not only do they have magic, they've apparently learned how to use magic. If she's had magic before, then she probably has some knowledge of how to use it, but if she's never had magic before, this could be interesting, because in Friendship of Magic, it's been established that you definitely have to train and learn how to do magic. It's not just something that you just poof and you just do it. It doesn't work that way. You have to train at it and learn it. So if Izzy is basically starting from scratch, in some ways, how is she going to learn magic? Is she going to learn magic? What kind of spells is she going to learn? How is she going to use them? If Izzy has had magic before, it's going to be interesting to see what does she decide to do with it. I think, honestly, she's probably going to be learning magic because that would make a lot more sense. It would certainly be more, quote unquote, useful for the show. If all of a sudden, oh, I have magic, I can do all these things. I know how to do teleportation and all these sorts of crazy things. Um, that wouldn't be as interesting as like, oh, I can do teleportation. Ooh, that sounds so exciting. I want to go learn how to do that. Yay, 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 yay. <laughs> but anyway, it's like, so overall, I really like Izzy. It's gonna be interesting to see what they're gonna do with her. I have a feeling it's gonna have something to do with her magic. I mean, it's either gonna be learning it, possibly teaching it to somebody else. We'll see. But I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more. So, roar! So now moving on to Pip. Pip is definitely the pink pony princess that Hasbro loves to continually perpetuate because... They just think that girls just love pink princess ponies, which there's probably some truth to that, but you know, <laughs> lots of other ponies are nice too. So, <laughs> yes, it's definitely a rule for Hasbro that they have to have one pink, like, princess pony. But I actually really do like Pip. She's definitely an interesting character, and Pip and Zip are just so different from each other. It's amazing that they're actually related. Pip has totally, quote unquote, embraced being a princess and Zip has almost in a way rejected it is the short answer but we'll be moving on to uh, Zip later and I'm sure I'm gonna mix up their names because their names are practically identical so Arr! 
Alright, but other than that, yeah, these two ponies couldn't be more different. Pip acts and looks more like a princess. She's this social media star. She's definitely embraced, like, the big social fame side of being a princess. And she's got all these fans. And I'm sure this is partially why so much time has passed in My Little Pony and New Generation. The level of technology has increased so much that, yeah, now there's, like, smartphones, social media. They're practically at, like, our level of technology. So now, you know, we can have a character like Pip, who's, like, the social media star. And that'll definitely make it much more relatable to <laughs> our generation and the social media generation, which I'm sure was what they were trying to do. Honestly, I don't think we got to see a lot of her character other than obviously her fans and the fame and, you know, just being the successful social media star are really important to her. But at the same time, she got a little bit moment to shine during the dancing competition where she sees that Sunny is struggling and she tries to help her by saying, can you feel the rhythm? Let it take you over. Mm. She's using her social media and like performer abilities to actually help Sunny in this moment. And I thought that was kind of cool. And I like that. Yeah, she's definitely a social media star, but I think she does care about her fans, but she's definitely willing to, you know, put on a show. It's kind of like when her mom says to Zip, why would you want to disrupt things? It makes every pony feel safe. Your sister understands. So she's a little bit more willing to put on the show and, you know, make ponies feel good, which isn't necessarily good or bad. We kind of got to see more of the social media star. So I'm not really sure where they're going to go with her. I think that, you know, she's going to have to learn, quote unquote, humility a little bit, which unfortunately she kind of got here hanging from the ceiling upside down. Like her world has literally been turned upside down and oh dear. Hmm. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see, will her fans like forgive her or are they still gonna be mad? I think in time her fans will forgive her, especially since now Magic's all back. She's gonna have to make a lot of videos and posts and stuff to, you know, get over this one. But I think in time that they will because, you know, she's definitely a nice pony. I think she does care. Like during that scene where it's like, you know, if we could teach them how to fly, we would. We do it in a wing beat. I think she does mean that. What do I think is gonna happen with her? Hmm. I think that, yeah, she's gonna learn humility. That, yeah, she's gonna have to, you know, get off her social media throne in some ways and do more to help out ponies that are, like, almost, like, right in front of her. At the same time, you know, having all this star power might come in handy in the future, but we shall see. Unfortunately, the thing that I really remember the most about Pip is actually her design and the way that she looks. It's like she looks like a princess. She, she has this thing around her head. And her hooves are gold. I don't know if that's natural or not. It's probably not. <laughs> and also her wings are all, you know, pink and fluffy. She's one of the few Pegasi that actually have a different wing design. They're almost more like butterfly-like. And uh, I kind of like that. Yeah, we honestly didn't get to see a lot of Pip's character, but overall, uh, I like her. I think she's cool. I mean, it's definitely fun, you know, having a social media star here. It's like, oh, I so wish I had live streamed that. <laughs> but I think she's going to learn to be more humble and those sorts of things in the future. And definitely looking forward to seeing more. So, Murar. So now moving on to Zip. Mm. It's like, I really like Zip. She has such an interesting character. I think in some ways we might have gotten to learn the most about Zip's character because she's one of the few ponies that are actually asking, you know, Sunny and Izzy questions because she has the very same questions because she's actually discovered like the station and seen that there was a time where all the ponies were actually friends. I think that she's the easiest to identify what her element of harmony could be. It could be honesty, but I almost feel more like truth. The scene with Pip and Zip in the prison where Pip is saying, if we could teach every pony to fly, we would do so in a wing beat, right? Yeah, right. Pip is in some ways going along with this quote unquote deception. Zip is basically almost rejecting it. I mean, that's the whole point of the station and even talking to, you know, these two ponies that she knows nothing about, that she's been told all these years, these are our enemies, they are a threat. She wants to know the truth. She wants to know what's going on. She doesn't want to live this lie of not being able to fly. She goes down to the station to actually get the real sensation of being able to fly. And as someone who's basically a virtual pilot, I honestly kind of understand this. She's just imagining the wind beneath her wings and it's just so cool. And it's for the one of the few times that, you know, I almost wish Blue Star was a Pegasus and I could fly. That would be so cool. 
little Rawr! she's really not willing to go along with this she could go along with this lie that you know her mom and possibly you know the pegasi royalty for who knows how long has been perpetuating that only the royals can fly because she in theory technically gets to fly i mean yeah she's on wires and that doesn't sound like a lot of fun no she wants the real experience she wants the true feeling of flying so i think that her element would be either truth or integrity that yeah she doesn't want to live a lie and i think that's great so Roar. it's tempting to think that she's like the new rainbow dash because she's very excited and like Mm, but oh no this is definitely not rainbow dash she is all in a lot of ways a lot more calmer and definitely a little bit more mm, shall i say humble than rainbow dash is but that was because rainbow dash was amazing she had all these amazing abilities she was able to do a sonic rain boom when she was like six that'd be like if a six-year-old got on a bicycle and like beat the world sprint record by like 10 seconds you know <laughs> That's starting to get off topic, but she's definitely very adventurous and outgoing. I mean, the first time we see her, she's almost like a ninja, like, huh. Why is she here at all? Why is she, you know, doing all this stuff and like jumping all around? I feel like she's trying to sort of get that sensation of flying or, you know, like jump over backwards over the cliff and glide with her wings and stuff, you know? So again, it's like, I think that she's, you know, interested in, you know, integrity and the truth and really learning how to fly and do all those things and not just simply pretend. She may not be as awesome as Rainbow Dash, but she's definitely an adventurous, outgoing uh, pony. And in some ways, if there's fighting to be done, I think Hitch and Zip are both going to do it because, well, that's basically what we saw in this movie. It's like when Hitch says, I got to rein that thing in. It's like, I got your back, Hitch. Mm, yo, good for her. It's, I think Hitch and Zip are going to be the two adventurous ponies and the quote unquote, the muscle of the group within the main five. So what do I think is next for her? Hmm. In some ways, the obvious thing, because her mom says it, is that, you know, one day she's going to wear the crown. She's going to be queen of the pegasi so it's probably gonna be kind of like twilight where it's probably getting she's gonna have to go on like lessons of like how to be a princess or a queen so honestly other than that i'm not really sure what they're gonna do with her but i'm definitely interested to find out so roar. now onto the big one sunny roar. i love sunny she's amazing i think because she's just simply an incredibly strong and amazing pony and i just love her roar. I'm gonna fall to the temptation of this is the new twilight but not really. <laughs> yeah, no, she's gonna fulfill Twilight's role of essentially being an alicorn in training and eventually be the next alicorn princess because all the alicorn princesses are probably gone. In some ways, this deserves a whole separate video on what do I think is gonna happen with that. But yeah, but the short answer is that yes, Sunny is in training to be an alicorn and the next princess of Equestria. And she totally deserves this because she was willing to stand in front of the entire town and promote pony unity during a presentation that was doing exactly the opposite. That was basically promoting all these products to defend yourself against the very ponies that she is saying they should be friends with. That takes guts. Not to mention she was actually successful in uniting all these ponies and bringing together the main five. So... Roar. Well, yeah, but she's definitely not Twilight. She kind of has some similarities to her that she does study. She has a notebook. She likes to write lists of questions, which is why I kind of think Pippin Zip's mom confiscate the book because she's asking too many questions. Ugh. <laughs> no, definitely not Twilight. Twilight didn't have a lot of friends because she spent so much time studying. Unfortunately, Sunny doesn't have a lot of friends because unfortunately she believes in something that they don't believe in and unfortunately it makes it difficult. Hitch has to say to her, I'm like the only friend you have left in this town. Do you want to lose me too? Oh, Sunny has broken into this presentation, caused all these troubles. It should really throw her in jail, and, and all that stuff puts him in a really bad position. At the same time, I really love how they've had this friendship, like, when they were, like, little kids. Come on. No, I'm on duty. <sighs> oh, all right. <laughs> and then they do this, like, this little ritual thing that they have. I think that was great. Sunny's definitely very understanding and, you know, definitely, I would say, persuasive to some degree. I was thinking... 
Well, she wasn't very persuasive or successful in being persuasive, you know, during like the presentation. But it is true at the same time. It's like, what were you expecting to happen? That we just give a speech and then we'll all just be friends and everything will be great. Again, especially when you have, you know, Phyllis saying, oh, how are we going to defend ourselves with cupcakes? If this was Friendship is Magic, I would say... Sort of. <laughs> but when she encounters Izzy and she's trying to convince her to go with her to um, Zephyr Heights, Pegasi are bad news. Earth ponies were wrong about unicorns. Maybe you're wrong about Pegasi. Hmm, it's a good point. She is actually able to, you know, convince these ponies at the end. We could let fear and distrust divide us, or we could choose friendship. We can choose love. That was really good. I mean, she has heart. She can be persuasive. She's also really strong. They come across the, the chasm and there's no obvious way across. Most of the other ponies are basically, you know, fighting and saying, all right, let's turn around and go home. And it's like, no, every pony, stop. We're gonna find a way across, find the crystals and save Equestria. Uh, that, that, that wasn't exactly the line, but that was the sentiment. She, you know, is not willing to immediately give up in the situation, but she's definitely there to help all the other ponies kind of stay together and, you know, like move forward instead of giving up. But at the same time, she's not the impregnable fortress that, you know, like Celestia was portrayed often and that people keep accusing Celestia. It's like, oh, she's perfect. She has no feelings. Episodes like A Royal Problem just prove that. And for Sunny, this movie also just proves that. At that moment where she thinks that she's failed, it's like, it's game over. The quest is over. Our friendship is over. All there's left to do is go home. Mm. This kind of disappoints me, because especially all her friends are like, we're in this together, we can't give up. But she says, every time I try to make a difference, all I do is make things worse. Mm. Oh. And I could understand how she feels that way, because, you know, they've gone through all this to get these crystals, to try to bring back magic. It didn't work. And now there's these two groups of ponies that were a moment ago ready to basically start physically fighting each other. And she's like, it didn't work and I'm just making things worse. You know what? I think it's time to just go home. Hmm. That's kind of bad, but again, she's been through so much. She's fought this fight her entire life and she's had to do it alone. So I could understand in this moment why she's wanting to give up now. Well, the good thing, well, there's two good news here is that her friends are actually trying to support her and in the end do come through for her. But once she goes back home, she figures it out. That's it. Boom. She's right back. There's a third crystal. Let's go do this. <laughs> yeah, so in some ways, yeah, it's kind of bad that she gave up. But again, it's understandable why. But she's definitely a very strong, determined pony that in the end is going to come through. And it's actually kind of good to show that, you know, she's not this impregnable fortress, that she does have this sensitive, vulnerable side that isn't always strong and determined. But regardless, she's definitely shown that she's going to come through in the end and she will stand for what she believes in. So, roar! And again, this is totally why she is deserving to be an alicorn in training. And I would be proud to defend you, Princess Sunny. Mm. So overall, these characters are definitely very different from the main six, which I think is good. Overall, we didn't probably learn a lot about their character. It was only one movie, but what little we did get to see, I like, and I definitely like these characters. Definitely looking forward to seeing more and where these characters go from here. So, roar. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, thank you for commenting, liking, and subscribing, and until next time, this is Blue Star. Stay strong and pony on. Blue Star out.